It's difficult to know where to start this morning. Well, let's just say things aren't always what they seem on YouTube. And in this instance, you think I've been working away at the plot for the last two or three episodes of my channel. In reality, I've been on holiday. And of course, what we do is we schedule video so that it continues to go up while we're away. At least that's the plan. So the reality is that I haven't been on the plot for probably eight or nine days, which is going to be very interesting because I think you're going to see a lot of change from the last episode. And then there's a well shed load of stuff to explain. So what is really gratifying is that everything is stood up and hasn't been blown down because I know there's been some pretty bad weather while I've been away and all my membrane has stayed in place although it's certainly a little bit more sort of raised than it was and it would appear that we've had some mole movement but generally things are being good you can see that this hoop has blown over so we've had some pretty strong winds by the look of it but everything seems to be in good order sprouts are still looking strong massive sprouts there which is fantastic and held up nicely with the stakes and you can see the red kale is just starting to come back from having been under those nets and suffered a bit and my two huge cabbage are doing okay. Might have to clean away a few leaves before I use them. Inside the nets, we've got some fresh broccoli, which would be nice to pick. Oh, that's a lovely one there. Look at that. And this cow is looking very good indeed. You see how much rain there's been. I can see that you guys have been suffering from rain in the UK while I've been away. And the garlic has just got that much taller in its pots, which is just fine. And these were the two elephant garlic. That's why they've not come up just yet. This bed was on my list to cover. Don't know whether I'll get to that today. Got a few things I want to do. Swede are looking really excellent, I'm pleased to say. And all this broccoli is continuing to grow on the nets not causing it any disruption at the moment. I did see some people were getting some dahlias very late, but these certainly don't look like they're going to flower. And my strawberries, well, they're okay. They look a bit wet in those baskets. So I might have to think about pulling them out at some point and planting them into some fresh soil. We'll see how we it get on. Like it's held up. My goodness, look at this. We've got a whole family of caterpillars there and a few more there. So we'll get rid of those because we just don't want those causing any more damage. That looks like the only one that's suffering. No, there's some more here. Just shows how mild this weather has been because these caterpillars are just continuing to survive. And I can't see any underneath, but We'll have to keep an eye on any of the brassicas because it looks like they are living through this cool, but not freezing weather. And I noticed this one has fallen. So I need to get him back up today. I wonder if I can just hook him round there and lift that for a bit until I get to, there we are. Nah, it's not going to work. Well, it'll stay there until I get to fix it a bit more carefully. So this one too has come away from the stake. So keep an eye out for caterpillars on this broccoli and just make sure it's restaked. I think that's the order of the day. The biggest change in plant growth or lack of it on the plot is the fruit garden and 
to me, having been away from it for a, a wee while, I can see that the leaves have fallen on so many of the plants. And you can see the pear trees. We get to see its structure now when the leaves are all fallen onto the deck. And here we've got the rhubarb just completely flattened. So that'll go into the compost, which is only just there, which is fantastic. And I can see that the gooseberries have been dropping leaves as of the apples. But the biggest difference is this area where the raspberries, that was a really strong show of remaining green leaves and now I can see right through it. In fact, this path was becoming difficult to use because it was wet and whenever you walk through it, you just brushed across a load of leaves and got soaked. And it looks like a few more days and there won't be many leaves here at all. And I can get in and do any adjustments I need to make, um, which includes moving those circular pavers out. So this area was on my agenda for this winter, but now with the downsizing of the plot, it's sort of refocused what I want to do. Got a fairly strong thistle and a stinging nettle growing in there. And then when I come down here, it looks like, whoa, slip on the rhubarb. It looks like we've had moles up the top here as well. My goodness, this rhubarb really has flattened. So loads of change in this area. Well, the news doesn't end there. There has been an awful lot of change well behind your viewpoint. And I'll try and explain. So as you know, I'm giving up that part of the plot and I've been keen to make sure that if there's anybody interested that they get an opportunity to sort of pitch for it. So I made it clear to the guys who organize the allotment and then I just spread the word amongst the people on the allotment so that things started to move. Because what I don't want to happen is I get my downsize plot organized and then everything in that direction gets overrun and causes longer term problems and gets a bit overgrown. So first of all, the squash bed, I offered the information to a neighbor of mine who just has that polytunnel up there. That's all he uses to grow. And I said to him, well, I've got this space here that I'm giving up that is in good order and it would make a great sort of additional growing area for him that he wouldn't have to work hard to try and recover. So he took up that offer and then just before I left for my holiday, he said he would like to start planting in it. And I explained to him that, well, I was using it for storage, but I would be happy for him to use a strip and he has done just that. So I can see that he's put in some tags and I think, let's just take a look. I think it's garlic or maybe they're just markers, but I'm pretty sure he's put garlic into there. So I'm no longer gonna be trying to do any maintenance in this area. And whilst I've paid for the allotment through till March next year, um, I'm happy for him to do that, of course. And I will expedite the movement of this as much as I can, although it is very dependent upon me getting organized down the bottom there and getting my IBC tanks into position. So that's one thing that's moved on in the last week or so. We've had a bit of planting on the plot, but there's bigger changes that have occurred. I know, crazy, isn't it? My coop is full of hens. Well, this is how the story goes. The gentleman who showed an interest in the coop was the guy who 
I gave my hens two, my three remaining hens, and they went sort of over there in that direction. And he took the hens over there, which was what I wanted him to do, and that left the coop. But he showed an interest in buying the coop, which of course I was enthusiastic to do. And in the end, I sold him the coop. And the arrangement was that over the coming weeks and months, because like the plot up the top there, this is paid for until the end of March. Um, the plan was that he was going to take this coop apart because it is modular. I made it, it comes apart reasonably easily. And then he was going to move it all up and put it in position where his current coop is. So that was my understanding of what was going to happen. But in actuality, he negotiated with the organizers of the plot to leave the coop here and therefore moved all the hens, including his additional hens that he had at the top, back into this location. And there we have it. So my hens have traveled up to the end of the allotments and come back. Good times. And that's not all the change that's happened in the last week or so. The run, which follows on from the coop, was also being given up by me. And my neighbor, Adrian, who I've shown you his plot in the past, he pitched for taking over the space of the run where the apple trees were and the orchard because he wanted to make a nursery area for flowers. Well, in the last week to eight days, he's done just that. And my goodness, what a transformation. There are no apple trees here any longer. And to be fair to Adrian, they were badly affected by canker. So they didn't have much of a future. But you can see he's done this fantastic corrugated tin sort of retaining wall filled and leveled all of the ground. He's kept the plum tree because I said to him I would probably like to move that if it was possible. And he's offered that I can leave it there and pick plums from it with no problem at all. He has no issue with that. Let me go around this side. He's kept the jostaberry bushes by the looks of it. Looks like he's filling in this area and he's made himself two fantastic beds and he's put some water containers in the back end. That is a huge amount of work in that area that he's achieved in such a short space of time. Let's walk round and I'll show you the paths that he's created. And of course I discovered all this on my return from my break. And well, it's fantastic that everybody's moving on and making such good use of it. Look at that. So he can get into his greenhouse and then he's going to use these beds for propagating and holding perennials, basically flowers. And he's got that hedge at the back. So, wow, fantastic work. And delighted to see it all being put to use in such a short space of time. It has prompted me to take some action. I'll explain. So of course it's my plan to use all of the paving stones that came from the part of the plot that I'm giving up in an arrangement around my downsized plot. And that includes paving stones that feed into that area, including all these just outside the shed, all this path down to here and down the side of the coop. There's a couple here. There's even one in the coop. And I also have paving stones that I intended to recover just along here, given that this coop was moving. And what I don't want is, well, custom and practice says, you know, if you keep something in place for too long, then it sort of becomes these people's 
property and it took me a long time to gather all these pavers so I'm really keen to uplift them and get them into the site so that everyone's clear what I'm taking and, and what I'm not. And that might sound a bit selfish, but in reality, the whole downsizing project um, had at the core of its planning to make a path all the way down the side here and to pave this area. So that's become my priority, but my, what a lot of change in a short space of time. But it's exciting that even in the throes of November, people are still very active, making sure their plots are gonna be in good order for the next growing season. Right, well, first things first, I'm gonna take this strip out, try and take everything from this area that I intend to move so that there's real clarity as to what's gonna be going on. So I'm gonna stack it all and then move it over. As you can hear, the new owner of the coop has a cockerel, which actually is just fine. Right, so I've moved, I think, everything that I can get easy access to out to here. And I'm just gonna move it into locations that are gonna be useful for assembling the two paved areas. So next step, taking care of my neck and using my legs, I'm gonna move these over there. Well, that's the first tranche. I'm not gonna go much higher than that with stacks because there's a risk that you break the bottom one. So they're just in piles for easy access. And I just as well finish this job by taking up the remaining ones to the gate. And then I'll do a quick check over and see where we go from there. Right, it's always good to do a bit of gardening as well as all the construction. So I'm just gonna tie these up. I mustn't forget that one that I gave a bit of support, but still needs a bit more. Let's get that in there. It's quite difficult when the leaves have fallen off the stems and there's nothing to really trap to make sure that it doesn't just slip down. Right, I've dropped one piece of string somewhere. I've got one more to do. Right, I'll get that one. Right, two parsnips for lunch. See what these are looking like. These are a nice deep area of the plot. So quite a good parsnip. Of course, it's sort of branching out because unfortunately, or fortunately even, this ground is very fertile because I treat it, it does cause the parsnips to sort of divert their stems and become a bit branched. But we make the most of it. There we are. Two reasonable bits of root there to have for our dinner. Just need a carrot. Always fun to pull a carrot. Right, let's get this one out and see what we've got. There we are. What a beauty. I had to check then. I started off down the bottom to put the leaves and of course, so much more convenient now. Well, I think that's me done for today. I've done a lot of physical work and I think the next step of leveling and getting the membrane tucked down is probably a bit too much for one session. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you did, why not like and subscribe? And if you hit the bell, which 
is down there, I think, then you'll get my updates every Wednesday and every Sunday at 8 p.m. Dios